Virtually every restaurant that we've heard from was talking about how strong the consumer was pre-COVID. In fact, Duncan was pacing for its best quarterly comp number since 2013. Tell me when you think we'll get back to that place. Uh, yeah, you know, Kate, uh, we were, we had a strong, our strongest quarter uh, in the last six years. And, uh, you know, as the crisis hit, uh, we uh, got into this quickly and, and we did all the right things. And look, we were guided by a simple principle of just doing the right thing. And for us, we accelerated uh, very quickly into this. Uh, we got into safety measures uh, very rapidly. And uh, as you may have heard on the call this morning, uh, it's a brand standard for us that gloves, masks, PlexiGuard, uh, and uh, is a standard for us, as well as uh, uh, we shipped infrared thermometers uh, to all the restaurants as well. So that's been a big focus, is making sure that we're d being safe and secure during all of this. Uh, look, um, the last couple of weeks, whether it's stimulus or people moving about and some of the markets opening up a little bit more, we're starting to see green shoots, so we're encouraged by all of that. Uh, and we're starting to see our numbers hover around uh, minus 20% 20, 20 in terms of uh, same store sales. So not where we want them to be, but at least we're encouraged by the uh, by the green shoots that we're seeing. Certainly. And so many people are looking ahead to reopening and fully reopening, getting to sit in Dunkin' and have that morning cup of coffee, as many consumers would probably like to get back to doing. In terms of that, who will you be taking cues from, and what do you think the future of Dunkin' looks like in this new environment we're operating in? Look, Kate, before uh, the crisis, Duncan, 90% uh, of Duncan's transactions uh, were in some form of takeaway. So it was easy for us or easier for us to flex into 100% uh, during this, uh, you know, safety and security uh, period. I think there's going to be two forces. One is obviously the safety measures that we just talked about. But the other one is going to be uh, enhancing your access to the brand and, and trusted brands like Duncan. And so, uh, look, for 70 years, we've been refining a model that is low touch, high frequency, affordable ticket. And we think the things that we've put in place, 70% of our uh, portfolio is drive through. We've added about a thousand curbside locations to those non drive throughs during this crisis. We've doubled our footprint on delivery from 2,000 to 4,000 restaurants uh, on the go. Uh, is at the highest level. Our mobile order and pay is at the highest level it's ever been. We've added 400,000 uh, new active users to our, our loyalty program. And even in CPG, uh, we're seeing our, our bag coffee and our K-cups up 20 to 30 percent. So again, wherever the consumer wants to use us, uh, we want to be there and delivering the best experience for them. We're hearing a lot of chatter, of course, about potential disruptions in the supply chain, particularly around meat. What's the Dunkin' supply chain look like and do you have any concerns? Uh, not at this point, Kay. We're watching that very closely. And look, our team and our franchisees, they've done a, a remarkable job over the last several years on contingency and assured supply. So we are not seeing any issues on the meat side at this point. Uh, and, and we don't have any products coming out of those plants affected. And besides that, we also have a good strategic relationship with Beyond. Uh, and so we feel like we're, uh, at least to this point, very well uh, covered in that area. You know, uh, my question is about what you what you see your future business mix being a year from now, two years from now. Do you think it will be much more heavily uh, curbside pickup uh, on the app drive through than it is today? Do you think, in other words, that what we've gone through here over the past eight to 10 weeks is going to be sticky in the future? You know what, Tyler, I do, and I think that was even before the crisis, because we were making those kinds of investments in terms of how to give a greater access to your brand. And I think that's gonna be uh, even more critical than ever before. Our next gen restaurant that you've heard me talk about in the past uh, really accommodates that with drive throughs and then greater uh, uh, you know, access to mobile order and pay. And so we may accentuate those in, in the new reality, but whatever it, it's gonna look like, Duncan's been a business uh, that's been, again, low touch, high frequency, uh, uh, affordable ticket. And we think whatever the reality is going to be, that model plays well uh, with that, uh, what the consumer is going to be looking for, in addition to those safety measures, which we view, view as really investments in the future. Dave, last question here. You said a lot of your franchisees obviously were eligible for these PPP loans. What was their experience like and what are their biggest concerns right now in getting back to normal? Yeah, and I know there's been a, a a lot of noise around PPP. I will tell you, if I can take a step back for a second, Kate, uh, Duncan Brands is a public company. We haven't applied for it, and, and we will not take government money. Our focus has been on keeping America working, and uh, we, we haven't furloughed any employees, and that's been our obligation 
uh, as a brand. But what we have done is we have worked with our franchisees. And if you think about our franchisees who employ an average of 150 employees, they are the epitome of the, the sort of that mom and pop and, and uh, that small independent business owner. So we've been working very heavily with them. Many have taken advantage of this. We're very grateful and appreciative to the federal government and the governors uh, for making this available. And it's all been under that sort of that umbrella of keeping America working. And so uh, th this has been uh, a successful program. Uh, and we're very appreciative that the, the government has uh, opened that up. Perfect. Dave Hoffman, the CEO of Duncan Brands, thank you so much for joining us today.